Um, uh, what else do we have? What else do we have? What else do we have? Doesn't say anything. Dude, huh? Okay, 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 okay. great. You only asked that like seven minutes into the recording. I know, I know, I know. It happened once before with Farouk, uh, after like 20 minutes. <laughs> <laughs> no, like, it wasn't 20 minutes, like, it was like 3 Sound. or 4 minutes. Eh? <laughs> <laughs> okay, <laughs> let's continue. Alright, welcome back to Nuggets on a Go. Today we're going to talk about OnBlock as well as developers saying that prices will rise further in 2022 towards 2023. Let's go. <laughs> All right, so you have been seeing a lot of different kinds of news. Let me just flash some of the news that has been happening recently. So you have a couple of GLS that has been released by the government. Seven new sites unveiled in second half this year. And later, we're going to chat more about that. Most importantly is that we want to look at all this on-block news that has been happening. For example, you have Lakeside Apartments successfully being on block, Kensington Park launching their unblock thompson view up for collective sale golden Mark has been successfully sold new launches doing very well for piccadilly as well as leaf at mb if we were to look at this news here jensen mentioned at coven third attempt euro asia apartments up for unblock sale attempt as well and of course on the ground we're seeing a lot of activities being picked up by projects attempting on block in the second half of this year. So looking back at this article, seven sites are being unveiled in second half of GLS program. Okay, so we have a combination of confirmed lists as well as reserved lists. But let's have a look at the confirmed list. Then what does this mean for everybody? So in the first place, why do our government want to announce new sites under the GLS scheme? This is a very clear indicator because our government, of course, they are very prudent in in terms of timing, when should they release new land in order not to over flood the market with brand new supply as well as to ensure that the market is not overheated because of a lot of pent up demand. So our government's job is to ensure that in terms of supply and demand is very well balanced so that we don't overkill the market with too much supply and we also don't allow prices to run up too quickly because of a lack of supply. Controlling of government land sales is extremely important. This is one of the clear signal that the developer's land bank is drying up. And if we were to come back to this chart again that we have shown everybody, this is basically what is happening right now because developers are running out of land. Why are they running out of land? It's because they will be handing over a lot of projects hitting TOP in the next two to three years. When projects are being handed over, they need to top up their land bank. If you have seen this chart that we have released before, this uh, uh, two years is the period that a lot of land banks being depleted. 2022, basically, I'm not sure whether is this actually happening now, but on the ground, I think more or less this is already happening. So resale prices inch up. Resale home sellers are asking future prices. So if you've been hunting for properties via the property portals, you will see that a lot of the asking prices has already moved up. So when this happened, when you look at a particular project and you look at the transacted caveated prices vis-a-vis -vis what is the asking price on property portals, you'll see that there's like a huge gap happening. And this happens because existing home sellers will have this fear that they will have nothing to buy or they are not sure what to buy or because prices are all going up everywhere else, they also want to raise their current asking prices. And we're talking typically about a few types of very hot favorite properties, namely three beders, four beders, and namely, a lot of these properties belong to the quantum play properties. Meaning, if you are talking about mass market in the OCR region, properties below $2 million are extreme hot favorite. If you go to RCR, properties in the range of $2.5 million are hot favorite. If you go to CCR, of course, properties in the range of 2 to $4 million are moving very well as well. So when you come back to this chart, what might possibly happen is that by 2023, new launches were hit new benchmark PSF. Resale will continue to move again because resale will then act as an alternative option compared to new launch very high PSF level. A lot of buyers might then fall back on resale properties because of a lower quantum, because of a lower PSF. And in the year 2024, resale will then 
start to look very far apart from new launch PSF. Recently, one of our seminars, we talked about this chart as well, and I want to bring it to your attention. So this chart shows the movement and growth rate of brand new launches PSF from 2019 to date, vis-a-vis -vis resale growth rate from 2019 until Q2 of 2022. So in terms of the percentage growth, new launches has grown by 26%, resale has grown by 5%. And what does this mean is that if you look back in the year 20. 20, their difference apart is only about 10 odd percent but right now it's close to about 21 percent growth rate difference this might present an opportunity for resale to move up in order to reach back an equilibrium in terms of their core differences in terms of growth rate because what we can deduce from this graph is that new launch PSM might have grown too quickly over the past three years and now it's time for resale to catch up of course you will then come back and look at articles like this because we also reviewed one of the latest news article that pop out on some of the very popular medium uh, talking about a property market sentiment survey that was being done and a lot of developers are forecasting that because of inflation of construction prices manpower labor crunch materials crunch new launches PSF are going to be more and more expensive in the near future do we agree with that uh, by the end of the article we do agree with that as well because of the fact of a lot of inflation push factors PSF level of brand new launches will definitely see a new high challenging a new benchmark Our article actually states when is all this going to end because with prices of resale moving up over the past two and a half years new launches also more over the past two and a half years lender properties also moved up rental rates also moved up and then before we can even take a breather now on block season came back even though interest rates are set to rise but it seems like everything else is going to jack up once again so let's have a look at the current balance launches most of the launches has already reached its 70 percent clearance mark and that will also mean that developers will be more confident not to lower prices developers will also be more confident to raise prices as well because they are already at the tail end with balanced units on the table there's no need for them to sell the properties at the discount level so in terms of the balanced new launches from 2020 and 2021 we're not going to see a drop in pricing in terms of the brand new ones that are going to come out and the second half and next year we're going to see a raise in benchmark prices so i think all of us will need to brace ourselves and of course get used to the fact that everything is touching two thousand dollars per square foot but that will also mean that a disparity will start to occur among the resale market resale market right now in our personal opinion is one of the best time to go in because if somebody were to still try to continue to time the market existing resale sellers once they have the motivation to move and they head out and see that new launches are already at two thousand dollars and above and all other resale properties other resale sellers are also asking at future prices they themselves will want to ask for future prices as well so of course right now if there is a quantum play available for larger units three four betas then we will suggest that as far as you can try not to time the market now let's have a look at the performance if we were to track back further over the past seven years so from 2015 until today in the past seven years the average price growth rate of new launch private condominiums and apartments has been at 51 one percent and average price growth rate of resale properties over the past seven years is at 17 percent so here as we track back even further because the first graph that we've shown you just now the one over here is only a three years calculation but if we were to stretch back to seven years we can even see a faster growth rate in terms of new launch at 51 vis-a-vis -vis 17 percent so this two years is pretty crucial for resale properties it might be set to rise and if you're hunting for resale we think that you should go ahead and head in right now. So right now for the second part of this Nuggets on the Go, we're going to talk about some of the interesting charts that we have charted over the past two weeks. The amount of BTO flats that are reaching MOP over the next three years is set to drop. The highest amount is actually 31,000, which is this year. And if you look at the entire list of all the MOP properties, this is the exhaustive list. If you come back to 2023 and 2024, there's going to be a dip in the amount of MOP flats that's available in the market. Actually, what does this mean for the private property market so what does this chart tells us basically this chart tells us how many bto flats are going to reach mop why do people always want to monitor this number year after year is because MOP properties owners have the highest amount of motivation to exit from their BTO flat that hit is five years mark because of the fact that most BTO flats will see a very healthy paper gain after staying there for five years this will mean that these are also the families with the most locked up 
profits sitting under their HDB properties and they are usually the group that has a capacity to upgrade to private property. So seeing a dip like this technically also doesn't mean a lot of things because not all owners that are living in BTO flats will want to sell their properties at the fifth year mark. Sometimes they sell it on the six year mark, seven year mark, eight or even 10 to 15 years mark. And a lot of the owners that hit their MOP from 2015 until 2022, they are still staying in their BTO properties and there's no data to track how many people actually existed from their BTO properties. But on a cumulative fashion, year on year, if there's 10,000 plus, 20,000 or 30,000 families hitting their MOP status, this presents itself more kinetic energy because there are more people with paper gains that are still living in their MOP properties that might exit and sell and move up to prior properties in future. If you were to look at this, also a very interesting updated chart is that as income level moves up on a combined income per family level, as it moves up to 10,000, 12,000 and 14,000, this income category of families are moving away from their existing HDB properties. So meaning that the higher income that a family goes to, the more motivation that they have to sell their HDB properties to move up to prior properties. And another very interesting chart that we've found out is that some of us might be worried that, hey, when interest rate rise, will a lot of people dump their properties? Technically speaking, if we look at what is happening in the market right now, whether a family owns one or two properties, because of the fact that rental rates has increased over the past two years, even if they are holding onto a second investment property, they can easily rent it out. And the rental right now, some of them can even cover the money mortgage money installment. Another supporting data that there's simply no reason for people to fire sale their existing property is that the average net cash versus the debt per household has increased over the past two years. So if you see, there was a sharp rise from 2017, 2018 until today. And the sharpest rise was from 2019 until 2020, from 123 index point all the way to 173 index point. That means there was a rise in terms of net cash per household versus their debt level. This will mean that they have higher holding power of their existing property. And there's no reason why existing families with properties have to sell their properties and fire sale them into the resale market. One more chart is that we also notice that mortgage data shows that more and more people are buying their properties for own stay. Now the grey bar here, you see a drop in people buying properties for investment. The drop is very minute from 2019 to 2020 with like a 2% drop and a 2% rise in the amount of people buying their property for own stay reasons. This actually shows that the more people buying properties for own stay reason, the less motivation and the less occurrence that they have to dump their properties in the market market through a recession or maybe through certain kind of event because of the fact that when you live in a property, maybe your kids are studying within a kilometer or two kilometers, there's no reason for you to fire sale a property. And most families in Singapore, they are dual income families and thus holding on to their first property that is an owner occupied property has a lot of motivation for them to continue holding it. And there's no reason why they need to sell their properties cheap in the market should there be a rise in interest rate. And further on, a lot of families that are buying properties or have bought properties for stay reasons have chosen to have fixed rates instead of floating rates because most of the time families going for floating rates are usually people that got into new launches and for new launches they only have floating rates to choose from but people that are buying properties for resale reasons or after their new launch hit their TOP date they will usually convert to fixed rate packages to lock in the rates for the next two to three years. Jarring all these reasons together coupled with some of the latest charts that we found and coupled with the first part of the nuggets on the go that we shared with you on on block coming back as well as government land sales as well as developers expecting price to raise further. We think that in summary, if you look at the growth rate of resale versus new launches, firstly, 2022 to 2023, hunt for resale aggressively if you are already in the market looking for a resale property. If not, then of course you have to brace yourself for $2,000 upwards per square foot for all new launches coming on stream for the next 6 to 12 months. Alright, so we are coming to the end of our Nuggets on the Go episode. Thank you for staying tuned with us and email insights at prb.sg to get a copy of the 10 charts mentioned in this episode. We hope that this particular episode will add value to you. We'll see you on the next one. In the meantime, take care. A bit slanted, am I? Is it, or is it because of the TV? The TV is slanted. <laughs> <laughs> That's why the TV is slanted. <laughs> well, when I look at the front, I look okay, right? <laughs>